Hi, we are here with another chatbot from LLM0200 series. If you remember in the previous video, I designed RagGPT, which was a chatbot that enabled us to chat with our documents. In this video, I'm going to design WebGPT and we are going to connect a GPT model to the internet. So the GPT model, or uh, in, our, in this case, the GPT agent, is going to decide whether to give us the answer based on its own knowledge or does it have to search the web and use the web search result and give us the answer based on the search result. So for this chatbot, I'm going to use the GPT model from OpenAI and we are going to design the user interface uh, with Streamlit. And for the functions uh, that allow us to search uh, the web, I'm going to use DuckDuckGo library in Python. So first I'm going to show you a demo of the chatbot and we are going to see how it works. And after that, I'm going to quickly walk through uh, the GitHub repository and explain how you can execute the project and uh, chat with the chatbot yourself. And after that, I'm going to uh, walk through the schema of the project and we are going to start designing the project piece by piece from the schema. So this is uh, the user interface and the chatbot that we are going to design in this video. Simply, if I ask a normal question that the chatbot does not necessarily have to search the web for it. So if I ask, I am going to invite my friends to a party, give me an invitation letter. So here I expect the chatbot to just give me the answer based on its own knowledge, and here it is. So the chatbot didn't uh, use uh, any function to search over the web, and it just provided me uh, with a sample uh, invitation letter. And actually, one more thing is, our chatbot is also going to have a memory. So if I, uh, if I add a follow-up prompt, the chatbot will, will be able to pick it up and make the adjustment and give me and uh, continue the conversation. So let's see how it works. So if I say, add the following information to the letter. And for the following information, I want to mention the date is Friday. The time is evening. And uh, let's say the place is my house. So let's see how the chatbot uh, can pick up the information, add it to the previous response and give it to us. So I hope this letter finds you in good health. I'm writing to invite you to a party that I'm hosting on Friday evening at my house. So it was perfectly added uh, the new information and it updated the previous response and it gave it to us. So if I now ask a question that actually the chatbot needs to search the web to give me the answer, uh, we will see how it works and how the chatbot works and how we can uh, also, also get the response uh, from the web search result. So if I ask, I am looking for the websites that explain how to train a large language model. Let's see the response now. So perfect, it gave me uh, four suggestions. However, the suggestions, uh, as we can see, they don't uh, came with the links. So if I uh, ask the chatbot, give me the links to the websites that you just suggested. So it has OpenAI GPT-3, Hugging Face, towards data science and a medium link. So we have OpenAI GPT-3, Hugging Face, towards data science and medium. We just uh, received the links. And if you open the links, actually, you will see that uh, the chatbot was uh, accurate and it could search the web. It provided us with a response uh, from the web search result. So let's uh, ask a different question. So if I ask, I am looking for videos that explain how to design a chatbot with GPT model. So now again, I expect the model to search the web and provide me with some links for 
my prompt. So the first one is GPT and Dolly, the video guides you through the steps of building a custom GPT model with ChatGPT. So let's open up the video. Multiple consistent characters with custom GPT and Dolly. And the second model is transform your vision deck analysis with GPT vision and lang chain rag. So the model was again uh, able to search the web and provide us the top five search results for our prompts. This is how the model uh, can actually decide based on our query whether to search the web and provide us with an answer or uh, to just simply use its own knowledge and uh, answer, uh, answer the prompt uh, accordingly. So let's now go through the GitHub repository quickly. Uh, this is the GitHub repository. Again, if you go to LLM0200 project and you go into actually WebGPT, you are going to see the description of the project, a uh, screenshot of the chatbot. And when I uh, was designing the chatbot, I asked about the most recent news about OpenAI and it provided me with a link which uh, was updated two hours earlier uh, than uh, my test. Then we have the project schema. This is the schema that we are going to use today for designing the chatbot. And uh, then you have uh, the necessary information for uh, setting up your environment. And finally, uh, by executing this command in your terminal, you will be able to uh, open the chatbot and chat with it. The only thing is uh, I'm using OpenAI GPT model. So in order to use uh, the GPT model, in the chatbot, you have to uh, update the API credentials and add your own credentials. So let's continue. This is the project schema. And uh, before I uh, explain the schema, I just want to explain a few uh, phrases here, uh, some concepts that are related to our project. The first concept is the knowledge cutoff. So on the top, I wrote addressing the large language models knowledge cutoff with real-time web search using GPT agents and function calling. So what does knowledge cutoff mean? One of the issues with large language models is that their knowledge about the world around them is as good as their training data. So let's say if a language model was trained on December 2021, it has no idea about the things that happened on January 2022. So that's what we call knowledge cutoff. And actually, if we are able to connect the GPT model to the internet, we are somehow solving that issue. So now our GPT model is able to search the web if it doesn't know the answer or the answer uh, is uh, about a recent incident, it's going to search the web and provide, provide us with the most recent uh, uh, update for that answer. Then we have GPT agents and function calling. So for function calling, I had a video earlier. Uh, I explained function calling in detail. I walked through all different steps that we need to take in order to uh, use function calling ability of uh, GPT models. Uh, but I will just explain quickly here as well. GPT agents and function calling in general, these two top topics are nowadays, you can hear it in almost every seminar, every conference about large language models, and uh, there are a lot of research around them. So GPT agent, or in general, a large language model agent is a language model that is able uh, to decide whether to use its own knowledge or whether to take an action and uh, for instance, in our case, call a separate function uh, based on the user's query. So this GPT model here is able to either provide us with its own knowledge, uh, an answer with its own knowledge, or it's going to call a function and give, give us a function in JSON format. If we execute that function, we can actually get the response that is relevant to the query. So this is a GPT agent here. So if we somehow automate the whole process of getting the function, executing in the back end, and getting the search result, passing it to a second GPT model, and provide the user uh, with a proper answer, we have a full agent here. Then we have function calling. Function calling is one of the tools that GPT uh, models can handle. I know OpenAI is now working on uh, different tools, and function calling is only one of them, but 
Again, this is an ongoing research domain. And as we move on, we are going to see more and more capabilities coming from the large language models. And it's going to just uh, make it easier for us to build different uh, apps and different, get different functionalities from the GPT models. So function calling is the main technique behind WebGPT. So let's quickly uh, actually recap function calling before I uh, explain the schema. So if you remember in the previous video about it, which was about uh, function calling, I explained how function calling works. So if we have a system and if we have some functions that can be executed on our system and give us some results, what we need to do if we want to uh, make the GPT model able to pick up any of those functions and provide us with the most relevant function to our query, we can convert our function to a JSON format, pass a list of different functions in JSON format to a GPT model, and the GPT model will then be able to provide us with the most relevant function in JSON format. The difference is now all the argument, all the necessary arguments are now filled based on the user's query. What we need to do is to convert it to in our case, Pythonic functions and execute it in our system, which is Python here. So this is the loop that we are going to create today in order to make WebGPT or, or the GPT agent in WebGPT able to search the web if necessary, and then uh, provide us with the result from the web search result. So let's see how it works. In order to design the system, first I'm going to start with the Streamlit user interface. After we design the skin and the user interface, I'm going to just simply add a GPT model uh, that is just a simple GPT model without the ability to call any function. And we are going to see how we can interact with our user interface. After that, I'm going to add the memory to our GPT model so now it can pick up and continue our conversation. And after that, I'm going to explain the backend uh, for function calling. And uh, eventually we are going to have the whole chatbot uh, together. So let's see uh, how we can design our Streamlit first. Before I uh, start coding, let me also go through the project structure. So I have a config folder that contains uh, all the configs of the project. And uh, just like RAG GPT, uh, you can start uh, changing the, pro like the model's behavior by uh, modifying the configs here. Unlike RAG GPT, I'm not going to provide the models with uh, a, a prompt format as we did before. Here, I'm just simply uh, telling my model that you are a chatbot and your goal is to respond to the user's question respectfully and concisely. You will receive the chat history and the user's new query. If the user's query needs to be answered by searching over the internet, return the best function to serve the user. Feel free to answer the user from your own knowledge if provided functions cannot answer the query. This is the system role for our first GPT model. And then for the second GPT model, which might or might not be triggered uh, based on the first uh, model's performance, we are going to tell the model that you will receive the chat history, user's new query, along with the web search result for that query. Answer the user with the most relevant information. So this time I'm just making it simple and you can see that actually just this, this simple uh, system roles uh, are going to make it a, a very effective chatbot at the end. I have a folder called images. Some of the images were used in the readme file. Some of the images we are going to use them uh, in the user interface and everything is happening in the source file. So you will have access to the WebGPT app itself on the source folder. And then I have utils folder, which contains the backend of our project. So in the load config, again, just like a RAG GPT project, I'm loading all the configs from the uh, YAML file. And then I'm going to distribute my configs using this module on my project. We have app utils, which I will explain. This is the backend of the function calling. And then I have websearch.py, which contains all the functions that uh, enables us to search over the web. So let's start by designing uh, the user interface. I will start working on the user interface by creating a new module. Let me just uh, quickly uh, copy paste 
the Streamlit user interface. This is just the user interface that I designed for this project. Let me execute it and then walk through it step by step. So if I just run Streamlit, run source app, Perfect. So this is the Streamlit user interface. Let's see how we designed it. So on the top, I'm simply uh, importing a Streamlit uh, library. And then I'm also importing the message uh, function from a Streamlit. Here I'm importing OpenAI. We are not going to use OpenAI in this module eventually, but right now, since I'm going to connect a simple GPT model to it, uh, I need OpenAI. I'm importing image because uh, as you saw, I will have a logo here. And fir first let's set the page config. I'm importing my image and then I'm giving it a title, which is WebGPT. I'm adding my image to the, uh, as the page icon. And I'm also considering the layout to be a wide layout. And finally, I have a title for my chatbot, which is a simple chat, actually, let's change it to simple uh, or simple GPT, let's say. So let's see how it works. So this is uh, the title that we just modified. We have uh, this page config that we just modified also was applied. So we have WebGPT on the top, we have our logo here, and we have a wide layout. So let's also changes to WebGPT. In the next step in Streamlit, what we need to do is to initialize our session state variables. So I have few session state variables here. One, of, one is called generated, one is called pass, and what is called one is called model name. So what I need is I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to use generated to collect the model response. I'm going to use the pass variable to collect the user's prompts. And eventually I have a model name since as you saw it here, actually here, as you saw it here, we have few settings that the user can uh, change. Although these settings are not going to be effective in this project, I just wanted to show you how you can uh, have your own settings and have different type of settings actually on a stream. One of the other things that I mentioned uh, for the goals in LLM0200 series was uh, for me to show you also how to design different chatbots using different user interfaces. So I'm not going to use the settings here except the clear uh, conver conversation, uh, but I just wanted to show you how you can have a different type of settings in a Streamlit. I just defined three session state variables. In the next step, I'm going to create a sidebar, which we just saw, add a title to it, and add my logo to that sidebar. And also I have a setting for the model type and I have actually this is coming here. And then I have a clear button that clears everything. So if a user uh, just uses the clear button, it is going to uh, empty all the uh, session state variables that we defined earlier. Then I'm going to uh, define two different containers. The first container is uh, just container and this container is going to be used for the user to write his prompt uh, in the beginning and then I have a response container which is going to be the container where we print both the user's query along with the model's response. You can also use some CSS uh, in the backend for uh, just modifying uh, the containers and uh, let's say the user interface as, as you wish so feel free to just also use some CSS in the backend. Then I just initialize the container, the first container, and my user right now can write the query and press the submit button or press, uh, press in a Streamlit case, control enter in order to pass it uh, to the user interface. So now let's add a simple GPT model to this user interface. So what I need to do is let's just simply check if user input uh, was actually uh, received. Then I'm going to create messages for my model. So as you know, uh, the way that we can uh, 
give an input to a, to, to a GPT model is through providing a list with two dictionaries. So the first dictionary, the first uh, part of the list is going to include uh, the model's role and the second part of the, the dictionary is going to, uh, to include uh, the, user's uh, the user's prompt and uh, anything else that we want to pass to the model. So if I just simply add here, you are a helpful chatbot. That would be the first part that we are going to pass to the model. And if I pass the user prompt, the user input here, now it is ready for us to just pass it to a GPT model and get the response. So if I want to get the response here, I can just call the OpenAI chat completion, create. And the first thing that I have to pass is the engine, which in my case, it is coming from my configs. So it is GPT model. Then the second uh, argument that I need to pass is the message that we just created. And finally, the last argument is the temperature. Again, it is coming from my configs. So right now, I should be able to get the response from the GPT model. And in order to be able to print the user's prompt and the model's response, what I have to do is just update the session state variables that I defined earlier. So in order to update the session state variables, the first one that I will update is session state passed. So I will just add the user's input to it. And the second one would be session state generated. So if you remember in the response, in order to get the text part of the response, like the uh, model's output, uh, we have to go through choices and then index zero, then message and then content. So here I'm only uh, taking the text part of the response and I'm passing it uh, to my generated. Eventually, now I'm ready to print both the user prompt and also the model response in the user interface. For that, um, first I have to initialize the container that we created earlier. So let's keep it like this. And before that, you know what, let's just double check that this was successfully created. And now what I can do is just print the user's prompt along with the model's response. So let's see actually how that works. So if I refresh the page and if I ask just simply hello. So I have an issue here. Response container, yes, it doesn't need the parentheses. Perfect. So we just added a simple GPT model to our chatbot. The next thing that we want to add is memory. So as you know, GPT by itself does not have a memory. So if I ask what was my previous prompt, it won't be able to understand that my previous prompt was hello and it would just respond with, uh, respond with your, pre your previous prompt was what was my previous prompt, which Clearly GPT does not uh, have the memory and we have to actually design the memory for it. So let's design a memory. The way that I want to design a memory is if I have a chat history, I want it to be something like this. I want it to be a list that contains tuples and each tuple, uh, I want it to contain the user query along with the query itself, actually, let's say query. And I also want that tuple to contain the model response along with the response itself. 
And then we can keep as many chat history as we want, as many of these pairs of Q and A's, and then pass it to a GPT model. Let's see how we can do it. So the way that I want to do it is by creating that tuple that I just showed you at the end of uh, this section, the container section. So let's see how we can create it. So I can simply collect the chat history as I just explained in a tuple. I have my user's query, then the user input, and then I have a response and the model response with it. And if I just append that chat history, that tuple, uh, every time that we have a Q&A with the model, I will be able to pick up the chat history in my session state chat history. Then what I need to do is to use the session state chat history in the beginning and process and take as many Q&A pairs as I want and add it to the model's input. So for that, what I can do is simply add chat history like this. So if I collect, let's say for now, two Q&A pairs, I go through session state chat history, I take the previous two Q&A pairs and I just put it in a nice uh, format so the model can understand that this is actually the chat history part. Also, now that I'm pro uh, like preparing the chat history, let's also prepare the query. So let's keep the query like this, user new question, then my query. So now it is in a very nice format. And now what I need to do is to just simply add these two together for the model's input. So now by going through these steps, we are able to pass a piece of the chat history to the model and the model would be able to continue the conversation and make it a nice experience for the user. Let's see how it works. So if I refresh the page again, and if I now say, hello, I have an issue here. I don't have chat history created here. So actually what I need to do is to just create chat history here. Okay, so let's try it again. Perfect, so let's start the conversation. Hello, uh, how can I assist you today? So if I say, just what was my previous prompt. So now the model should be able to pick up hello as my previous prompt. Perfect, so we just added a GPT model to our user interface and we created a memory for our GPT model. For the next step, we want to add one feature to our GPT model and make it able to uh, pick up the functions and also decide whether to use a function or whether to use its own knowledge. So let's see how that works. If you remember uh, the tutorial function calling, I showed you a few functions in that tutorial. So I have a function called JSON schema that takes a Python function and converts that function into a JSON format. The most important part of that function is, so before actually going through that, let's, let me show you the functions. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 functions in this module. And these 10 functions, uh, each one of them is uh, for a different uh, type of web search. So the first one is retrieved web search results, then web search text, web search PDF, uh, get instant web, web answer, web search image, web search video, web search news, map, uh, search suggestion, and eventually uh, for text web search. So these are functions that I took from here. So if I go to DuckDuckGo search Python, and if you open the website, you can actually see all the functions along with the explanation in this website. And this is a very nice library. It is open source and it helps you uh, to use Python for searching the web. 
So I have all the functions in websearch.py. What I'm doing is I pass all of those functions to this JSON schema and create a list of all those 10 functions, but in JSON format. So if you remember again in that tutorial, I mentioned there are a few important things uh, that we have to keep in mind. First thing is that my functions and uh, my arguments, like the arguments of the function, should have a full description. So whether they are optional, what types they are, and then we also have uh, to explain what the function does along with the arguments on, of the function and what it returns. So if we include the description, a detailed description in our functions, then we pass it to this JSON schema. It's going to be able to generate a nice JSON format function that the GPT model can understand. And then the GPT model can actually decide whether, uh, which function to choose based on the user's query. So what I'm going to do is to loop over the functions, pass each of them one by one to this JSON schema. And this is exactly what this wrap function does. So it is just collecting all the functions, passing them to the JSON schema and uh, getting a list from the JSON format functions. Then I also have a function called execute JSON function. So this function, uh, we are going to use it after we receive a function from the GPT model. So I showed again in the tutorial how GPT model would give us the output in case it calls a function. What the GPT model gives us is an output in JSON format. And in that JSON format, we have access to the function name. And we also have access to all the necessary arguments that GPT extracted from the user's query. So here I'm getting that JSON output. Um, matching the name of the function that GPT retrieved. And if any of these functions was called, what I'm going to do is to just convert the function arguments and execute that function in Python using the converted arguments. So this is just a, some sort of a mapping function that takes the model's output, maps it to my functions, to everything that I have, find the corresponding function and execute that function in Python. So the result of this function would be the result of each one of these in case they are executed, which is going to be a web search result. Then I have a function called ask LLM function caller. So this function is going to get a GPT model. It is going to get the temperature the message, just like what we created, it is going to contain chat history, user's query, and uh, system role, along with the list of the functions that we converted in JSON format. So the output of this function. We pass the output of this function to our GPT function caller. Then when we are using that GPT itself, now we have two more arguments to add. We add our, our functions to the functions argument, and we also set the function call to auto. So this tells the GPT model that you are free to choose whether to use your own knowledge or to call one of those functions. In response, I might get the same response that we received earlier, that I showed you how we can extract the text, or we might get a function call in the output. So we are going to distinguish these two outputs from each other. In case the GPT model, the first model, this function caller, calls a function, that function is going to be executed using this function. And then the output of this function is going to be passed to the second GPT model. So this second GPT model takes a GPT model, the temperature and messages. And messages includes chat history, user's query, and the web search result. And here, as you can see, these two arguments are, are not going to be uh, used here because this GPT model is just going to act as a simple GPT model. We don't want it to have access to any of those functions. So I designed a user interface I added a simple chatbot and I also added a memory to it. Now let's add the function caller 
and also uh, the second GPT model to our app. So let me just close this one and open the main app. Everything is the same. I'm just calling all the necessary libraries. I'm loading my configs. I'm creating uh, the user interface up to this point. So up to this point, everything is the same as we did in the app.py. Now we are going to modify this section. Here I'm going to, just like we did, create a chat history and exactly the same query that we created earlier. And we're also going to create the same message type for our model. With the only difference here is I'm going to use the function caller system role that we read earlier here. I'm also going to pass the chat history and the query to the model. So the first model is exactly receiving the same input that we gave to the simple GPT that we added to, use, to the user interface. The only difference is now it also receives a list of functions that we want it to have access to them and it will be free for the model to choose any of them if necessary. I'm going to append the user input to the uh, session state passed. And now two things can happen. Either the first GPT model is going to call a function or it's going to use its own knowledge. Let's first see how, uh, what happens if it's used its own knowledge. So here is the first model used its own knowledge. What I'm going to do is to create the same chat history that I created earlier to append the model response to the generated, uh, to the session state generated. And also I'm going to uh, add the chat history to the chat history session state. So from here until here, everything is the same again as we just uh, created in app.py. The only difference is I just added a simple error handling. So in case something goes wrong, anything might happen with the open AI, the API call or anything that might happen in the backend. I'm not going to see an error on my user interface. Instead, I'm going to see uh, a nice message for the user response uh, is going to be an error occurred. Please try again later. So that's the only difference. So except this part, everything that we, uh, we have in this module is exactly the same as we had in the app.py that we created here. But here, now we have function JSON list and the first function, the first uh, GPT model might actually give us a function in the output. So what happens is if the output of the first GPT model contains function call. That's how I know that the first model didn't provide the answer, but instead it provided a function in JSON format. What I'm going to do is exactly this, uh, uh, the, the steps that I explained in this module. I'm going to take that function and pass it to execute JSON functions. So this is this function. It is going to do a mapping, take the name, extract the name from the output of the GPT model. And based on the name of the function that was extracted, it is going to uh, execute one of these functions. Then I will have a web search result. I will just simply process the web search result in a nice format and I will create the input for the second model. Now the second model gets the GPT model, the temperature and a message. The message contains chat history, query and this time web search result. From the second model, I'm going to get the response. And again, I'm going to treat it as a normal GPT model. So again, here up to this point is exactly the same as here. There is just a small difference and it is in the output that they are printing. So just for me to quickly understand, uh, like where was the source of the error? I printed an error occurred with the function calling, please try again later. So if I'm chatting with the chatbot, 
And if I uh, personally see uh, the model, like the printed output, I can immediately understand where was the source of the, the error so I can uh, just debug the problem quicker. And in the end, I'm just going to print the user's prompt and the model's prompt. So let me quickly explain what happened here. So as a user, I pass a prompt to my chatbot, to my user interface. That us the user message goes through the first GPT model. It also has access to the memory. The first GPT model decides whether to answer the user based on its own knowledge or to call a function. Those functions are coming from DuckDuckGo search that I showed you uh, the documentation. You can go through them and see what they are. But eventually, based on the user's question, whether the user is searching for a map, is searching for images, is searching for news, text, videos, etc., it is going to call a proper function. That function is going to be in JSON format. I'm going to take the search results that I obtained from executing that function in Python and pass it to the second GPT model. That second GPT model will have access to search results, user's query, memory, and each one of the GPT models will also have a separate system role. And this model is going to give me an answer based on the retrieved information from the internet. So this is how we can connect the GPT model to the internet. And again, let's see how it works. So this is our user interface and the chatbot is ready and we can chat with it. So first again, let's ask a normal question. So I want to ask for more information from my customer. Give me a good email for it. So let's see how the model will use its own knowledge. I can help you with that. Could you please provide me with more details about the information you need from the customer? Of course, uh, I need to know more about his professional experience. Give me an email template. So here is the email template that it gave us. As you saw, I had few back and forth with the model and it was able to perfectly continue the conversation and pick up my previous Q questions and Q and A's. And let's see how it did. I hope this email find you, uh, find you well. I'm reaching out to request some additional information from you. It would be great, greatly appreciated if you could provide the following details. I specify the information you need, the information you need. Uh, please let me know if you have any question. So feel free to customize the template. That's perfect, right? So we just asked the model to provide us with an email, a template email uh, that in which we want to ask our customer for more details. And this is the template that it gave us. And we had to go few, uh, back and forth a few times for the model to understand uh, clearly what we are looking for. This is still not perfect, but my query was also very vague. So that's a fair response from the GPT model. Now let's ask a question and make the GPT model to call a function for the output. Before that, let me show you the output for uh, the first few prompts. So this is actually the input of the model for the first few prompts. The first prompt, the model received its own system role. Then it received the chat history, which was empty, and my new question. In the, in the next prompt, it received again the system role. This time the chat history contained my query along with the model's response. And in the third question, 
Again, the model received its uh, system role. The chat history contained two of our Q and A's. So this is how we uh, wanted the model actually to see the input. And we just saw that how effective it was for the model to, so it was able to pick up the conversation and continue smoothly. And uh, just, it didn't push us to, to repeat our questions uh, again and again to understand it. So let's ask a different question from the model. I'm looking for videos explaining how to design a chatbot using a stream lit. So let's see how that works. So the model gave us some suggestions. Uh, create multiple page websites using a stream lead. Let's open this one. Hello, friends. So as you can see, it is just a perfect answer to my prompt. And the video was actually uploaded 12 hours ago. So this is what I meant by solving the problem of a knowledge cutoff. So the model was actually able to surf the web and find out relevant uh, information which was added even up to a couple of minutes ago. So this is a perfect response actually that uh, is also a very interesting response uh, with regard to the time. And here again, I can see this video was updated one day ago, a step-by-step -step tutorial to create conversational Q&A chatbots using Gemini Pro free API. I don't see a stream lead here. Maybe if I scroll down somewhere on the page, let's just test. Okay, perfect. So if I search a streamlit, actually on the first comment, I see a streamlit in the uh, comment section. So that was not an irre irrelevant response. Uh, still uh, in the search result, this one's probably among the top uh, search results and the model just picked it up. So let's also, so the model provided three more results. Let's open the last one. Uh, Coursera create a lead generation messenger chatbot using chat field three. And this one also, it does not contain a stream lead. So anyway, the model was able to pick up some good answers and it gave us some good suggestions for our prompt. Let's also see uh, what is happening in the input of the model. So as you can see now, the inputs are quite messy, right? But still the GPT models are able to understand the content, uh, understand the chat history, understand the search result and give us a nice answer. So if I try to figure out what is happening here, here I can see the web search results. So I'm also printing the web search results here. This is what the model received as a result of the web search. Let's see the full input. So the first model received system response, chat history, and my last prompt was I'm looking for videos explaining how to design a chatbot using a stream lead. Then it called a function named web search video. And here is the second model's input. So the second model is receiving the model's uh, system role, user's query, which is my chat history. Actually, this is my chat history. And so here is the web search results in the second model's input. And it is up to this point. So this is the web search result that the model received. And this is my last question. I'm looking for videos explaining how to design a chatbot using a stream lead. So this is the input of the second model. And this is the input of the first model for our last prompt. So that was it for this video. And I hope now you have a good understanding of uh, function calling, uh, large language model agents, and uh, how we can actually connect a GPT model to internet and address uh, the issue of knowledge cutoff. Before I wrap the video up, I just want to mention one important note. So when it comes to GPT agents, it is very important how you design the, the system because if you design a very complex agent, your models might not actually perform as you expect. So sometimes they might get confused and they might uh, miss uh, key information. So the way that I pass my functions to my GPT model, if you check my functions, you see that 
my, all my functions take maximum one argument that needs to be filled based on the prompt and usually one or two arguments that are optional. So I can ask the GPT model, give me 10 links to videos that explain how to train a language model. So if I uh, also provide 10, now it is going to call a function, but since all, our fu all my functions also take the number of uh, web search result, it is going to provide me with now 10 uh, results in the output. So usually the default is two or three uh, or five maximum, but if I increase the number uh, for that argument, it is going to be able to pick the number of uh, search results pass it to my function and actually get 10 results out of it. So this is the max results, which is uh, optional in all my functions. So my suggestion is when you design GPT agents or large language models agents, do not make it very complex for the model unless you want to do research, of course, but if you are actually trying to design a system and uh, make it work, you can push the model to see where are the limits, but eventually, if you make it simple for the model, you are going to get the best performance from it. So this was just the final note that I wanted to add to the video, and I hope uh, now you have a very good understanding of the whole system. If you have any ideas on how to improve the model, I would be very happy to hear it. So again, thank you very much for watching the video. In the next video, uh, I'm going to design another chatbot. That chatbot is going to be a combination of WebGPT and RagGPT. It's going to be a very complex chatbot comp uh, comparing to what we just uh, designed in this video and the previous one. I strongly suggest you to go through the first two videos, two chatbots, because we are going to combine them and uh, create a more complex chatbot. And we are also going to design it in Chainlet. So again, thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next video.